Okay, so this part of the lesson should be a little more fun now. We're going to take what we've learned in the previous two parts of lesson three. Okay, and we're going to apply it to create a piece of jewelry. Okay, a nice ring. So let's create a new part. We're going to be using the basic closed solitaire ring template. Let's give ourselves a name. Okay. Now I'm going to save my file straight away. Save it, listen through ring, save. Okay, so let's start off by placing a stone. Gem settings, place stones. I'm going to place a faceted marquee. Let's leave it as a white diamond dimension, let's give it a length of 10 millimeters and we're going to place it on this datum at the top here so let's let it, feel it snap in there to that point left click, confirm the operation and there we have our marquee stone ok now let's put a bezel on this stone left click bezel navigate to the marquee bezel ok so our gem length is 10 I'm going to place it on this datum again ok so I'm just in wireframe mode go back to shaded mode ok this is matching our gem width we could change our gem width if we wanted this will change the width of the bezel but we have a gem width of 5 ok let's change our dimensions a little reduce this slightly 3.5 remember we have to left click on preview to see our changes ok we can change our bezel angle to give it more of an angle here ok I think I like this for the most part now ok once we're done with this editor box we can cancel out of it so we can see what's going on and then we can confirm our operation ok so there's our bezel plus stone all of our dimensions are popping up here we can hide them with our dimensions on off icon Ok I'm now going to blank out my stone and bezel, remember these are both components, they come in as components but we can merge them to turn them into shapes, oh, window pick them both, right click, blank and now I'm going to create a ring shank, design sketches ring, ring shanks, we'll just stick with the default five sided, ok let me mention that you'll see many of our pre-made ring shank sketches will have their comfort fit counterpart ok so the CF at the end of the name stands for comfort fit and as you can see this is adding this smoother surface that is called a comfort fit ok it's more comfortable for the ring wearer so I'm going to stick with the default five sided I'm going to place one at my top datum here and let's snap in and one on the bottom template datum. Ok, so we can place more than one at one time. Confirm the operation. And now I'm going to modify the dimensions of this ring shank sketch. Ok, let me first of all open up my history. You can see that our history is arranged into folders within our template. So we can open up this folder by left clicking here and we have all the parts of our template history here and then the beginning of our own history that we've created on the template ok so let's make modifications to our dimensions change my entity filter to dimension 
let's take this ring shank down a little right click on the dimension modify value make it a 4 you can double click also 2 now you can see every time we change a dimension our history is being replayed okay like this it's re replaying our history to update the history to our new dimension now if we modify value if we check this delay solve box it's going to delay the solve it's going to postpone our history regeneration until we do it manually ourselves okay so let's set this to 2 okay then you can see that we have a new dimension except it's not been locked into the history because our history has not been regenerated yet okay so we can make some more modifications modify value see it's still checked this box okay let's make some changes here now when we uncheck this box and press OK it's going to update all of our dimensions Okay, now if we forget to uncheck the delay solve option, we can just regenerate our history manually by left clicking on this regeneration icon. Okay, you can see it updates. Let's disable our dimensions. So we have our two sketches with varying parameters. Now let's do a drive curve loft. Okay, our curve, we're going to be using a template curve. It's nice to use the curve list that we have. Okay, so set our entity filter to curve list. Left click our template curve list. Okay, now we pick our profiles, which are sketches. Okay, pick our first sketch. And then we need to pick our second sketch. Remember, pick at the same points on the sketches. Okay, so we're picking on this bottom corner for both sketches. Now we want to create this ring shank with no end caps, okay? Because we do not want extra surfaces thrown in with inside our shape. Okay, we want to keep this as one complete closed shape. So let's confirm the operation. And here we have our ring shank. Now let's unblank our bezel and stone right click we can unblank all or if we left click on bank we'll go into our secondary environment and we can pick the particular shapes that we wish to unblank confirm okay so here you see we're starting to build up our ring okay so now we need to I think bring this bezel and stone down a little bit now if you remember we placed our bezel and stone onto this datum. Now if we change this dimension which is the height of this datum above the top of the ring finger we're going to be changing the bezel and the stone with it. So let's set our entity filter onto dimension double click this dimension and let's move it down a bit. Take our delay solve off. Okay. There you go. It's moved down. I'm going to bring it down a bit more than this. Let's get, say, three. Okay, so this looks good. Now, you can see that the bottom of this bezel is protruding into where our ring finger should be. Okay, so we need to trim this out so that we get a nice fit of the ring and it's comfortable. Okay, so first of all, we need to merge 
our bezel because we cannot trim a component. So we're going to use our merge tool. We can find the merge in the shape ribbon tab or the assembly ribbon tab. Okay, it's in both. So we pick our component. We can then add an automatic boolean to shapes. In this case, I'm going to bring in this component as a shape, as a base shape. Okay, so you see we have a shape here now, two shapes, and our center stone, which is a component. Okay, so now I'm going to trim the ring shank to the bezel. Okay. I want to get rid of this material in the middle here. So if I trim, I pick my base, which is the ring shank, and I'm going to trim it to the inside faces of my bezel. Now we can see a little arrow in here dictating our direction. Now at the moment this is going to trim out our ring shank and keep the middle here. Okay, so we want the reverse of this. Redefine, flip direction, confirm, and there you go, we've trimmed out our ring shank to the faces of our bezel, the inside faces of our bezel. Now let's trim our bezel to the ring finger. Okay, we're going to trim it. Okay, so we're going to do an extrude cut. We're going to extrude our template sketch. Okay, so let's extrude it out here beyond our bezel. And we're going to use an extrude cut. Okay, we're not getting a preview here. But we'll confirm the operation anyway. And there you go, we're seeing the cut. We have trimmed our bezel to the ring finger. Okay, so this ring is coming along now. Next up I'm going to add some fillets to give that comfort fit. Fillet, edge fillet, let's fillet these edges. Okay, if we don't see a preview that usually means that it's not liking our radius. So we bring our radius down, okay, let's say 0.4. Okay, that's quite a significant fillet there. Confirm. Okay, middle click to bring up the fillet again. Let's fillet these edges of our bezel. Okay, confirm. And there we have some nice filleted edges. I'm now going to combine add these two shapes, the bezel and the ring shank, to turn them into one shape. Combine add. Pick a base, it can be either of them, and the operator similarly can be either of them. Confirm. We now have one shape. So let's change the colour. Okay, let's check if our shape is closed. It is closed. Okay, let's save our work. And then this could be ready for manufacture. Okay, obviously without the stone. You can blank it out. This could be printed, 3D printed, and then cast. But for the purpose of rendering, if we want to do a render of our design, we may want to add a chamfer to these edges. Okay, and this could be added to our manufacturer at the jewelry bench. So let's add a chamfer. We'll add a slight one on the inside. Okay, we'll add a large chamfer on the outside. Okay, so let's say 0.3. Ok, 
Okay. Let's move our stone up a little bit. Just for the purpose of rendering. Save our work. Let's try out our live renderer. Okay, it will take a bit of time to render this image. Let me bring in a rendering studio to improve the render of our ring. Okay, so this is a rendering studio. Place it at the origin. Confirm. And this is going to give us some nice light reflections to improve the live render of our image. 